All right. Let's go. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, chat is now turned on. Welcome to this lovely August body. Um, I am Charlie, Chief Tinker here at Momentus. Welcome. Um, if you want to say where you're from in the chat here and say hello, we'd love to hear from you. Let me make sure it is turn it's turned on. Um, we're so excited to be here with Sam right now. Uh, and thank you, Tanisa, for joining us as well, our interpreter. Um, hello, lovely person from Wakena. Um, I am uh, not going to talk a lot because there's a lot to get through. If you were here for Sam's earlier classes, you know these are quite informative. and We take our time and we get to like have some fun. This is in particular for those of you, not only for the knitters, but those of you in the SPN family. Um, this is a, a little design that we're going to do what we call a knit together, where we go from start to finish. So if you've never knitted before, or if you're a pro knitter, we're just going to, we're going to get a pattern. We're going to make something together. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hello, Sweden, DC, Netherlands. Wow. Yeah. Wisconsin, Minneapolis. So there's so many people here from so many places. Sam, what, how are you? How's it going? I am great. I am great. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> I am here and ready to do nimble fingers. Nimble fingers. That is, I've never been called that in my life. So that I will. <laughs> <think>. <laughs> um, I uh, uh, also a quick note. Uh, so chat is open. Q and A box is open. You can use that little Q and A button. Um, and if you have any questions as we go along, we can take those on. Also, if you uh, purchase meet and greet seats, um, just remain in this Zoom. And at the end of class. Uh, in about 45 minutes, we will move on to the meet and greet at that time. Yay. And then uh, as a reminder, because Sam just did it, uh, if you want to talk to everyone, you just have to toggle the everyone button there on the chat. Otherwise, it's just a host and panelist like Sam just did. Not that I'm calling Sam out for not knowing how to use technology. Um, right, right. Thank, thank you for that. It's that, like theoretical. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Everybody is talking to everyone now. <laughs> Sam you are adept with technology. You're like a tech maven. <laughs> oh, I did it. You did it. We're here. So let's get decidedly less, less techie, uh, even though it is South by Southwest here in Austin, where I am. Um, no, let's get less techie be and more nitty. More nitty and more analog. More analog. Um, everyone, this is our goal, not the mug, just the cozy. So um, it's going to look like this when we're done. It's just a little strip with a button and a loop. And you can put it on your mug. And I love it. I just, um, it does make your mug a little more slippery. So please hold on to the handle. Um, but it does, it really works and you don't bring your hands. So anyway, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of this. I like it a lot. Um, I am going to be using this yarn. It is from a company called Quince and Company. Uh, they have beautiful, beautiful stuff. They they were lovely uh, and sent this to me in a very Winchester-y color, I would say. Um, this is uh, wool and alpaca, so it's very soft. You can wash it by hand because in case you spill your tea on it. Um, if you make it out of something more like polyester or cotton, you can literally wash it in the washing machine. Um, so this is called worsted weight wool. And if you look on most tags, and this tag is going to call me a liar. Oh, no, here we go. It'll say on there what size needles you want, okay? So hopefully you've bought your yarn with needles that are the appropriate size. But if you look here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Right here it says size 4.5, uh, size 7. And so that is what I have. These are size 7, 4.5 millimeter. And that means that the stitches will be the appropriate size for the yarn. Um, won't be too tight, won't be too loose. If you have, does anyone have a um, a different size needle and yarn, bigger perhaps or smaller? Let me know in the comments. It feels like a very personal question, Sam. I know, good. listen, I this is what, what happens at Momentus stays at Momentus until you put it on YouTube. Right, exactly. Um, I don't think anyone is answering me. So, oh, 3.5. Okay, 
So the 3.5ers for size 13, okay. So the way gauge works is however many stitches are in an inch is how many stitches you're going to want for the project. So the project is going to want to be uh, three and a half inches total. Otherwise it's going to envelop your whole mug if it's too big, or it'll just be like a little belt if it's too small. So this pattern that I have is for 4.5 or 5.5 um, .5 needles. So if you're using the this size, you're gonna need uh, more stitches than the bigger your needle gets, the fewer stitches you're going to need. Does that make sense? Because there'll be more per inch. On your size 13, you're gonna need like nine or 10 stitches max. Um, we are going to email you a pattern at the end of this class for everyone present. Um, and you'll be able to go back and watch this again to see what I'm doing and practice your stitches so that by the next class, we'll be moving on to um, actually finishing the whole pattern. So right now, it doesn't matter what yarn you have, what needle you have, the, the stitch is the same. So you're going to take, so now, oh, so if you get yarn like this, by the way, if it's in a skein is what this is called, do not just open this and start knitting with it. You will end up with a spider web that you will never be able to untangle. You need to open it up into a big loop like a tire. Watch, so you pull it apart and it opens up like a loop, right? And you're gonna untie the little knots that hold it together and you're gonna have either like your over your two feet, over the back of a chair, uh, a partner or unsuspecting roommate, hold it like this, and you're going to wrap it into a ball. Otherwise you will be hating life and you'll give up knitting because you this will turn into the greatest tangle life has ever seen and you will not be able to use it. So, okay, so into a ball. You're gonna take a couple feet of yarn and you're gonna make a little slip knot. So around your finger and just push the loop through. You know how to do this. Just a little slip knot like this. And you're gonna slip your needle through <clears throat> and pull it not tight, but just snug. So you, you can see a little daylight through there, okay? Now, you're gonna take the end that has the tail. The tail is the, uh, the part not connected to the ball, okay? So the loose tail, you're gonna grab it like this. So it's between, so the tail goes through your fingers, okay? Grab it like this. You're going to loop, turn your hand. So it is now looped like this. You are going to hold the, hold this like this. You're going to slip the needle through, hold it there, take the yarn that's attached to the ball, wrap it around the needle, and you're going to use the needle to keep that thread and pull it back through and pull it tight. So what you're doing is putting another stitch on the needle, okay? So I'm going to do that again, don't you worry. So. Now there's the slip knot and the new stitch are both on the needle. <clears throat> so now we're gonna do that again from this side. So you're, I'm sorry for all the lefties that this is backwards. Okay, so here's the tail. You're gonna grab it. I told you to do something wrong. It's not between your fingers, it's around. So, sorry, just rewind and do this over. If you didn't do it right, that's because I told you to do it wrong. Okay, so you're gonna grab the yarn like this, okay? Loop your thumb around it. So it's still an L. It's still an L, but just the opposite, okay? So thumb over the top, loop it around. Now you're gonna stick the needle through this part Wrap the yarn around the needle. Use the needle to pull it back through the loop and pull that loop 
both sides gently so it's snug. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Grab the yarn from the top. Put your thumb across the top and loop the yarn around. Okay. No, looks like this. You're gonna put the needle through your thumb, wrap the yarn around, use the needle to pull this thing you wrapped around through the loop and pull it tight. Okay. Karen DeGraff, got it. Anyone else? Did anyone else get it? See, Tanisa, we're asking people to type and knit at the same time is the problem. Yep, there it is. Yep, people, okay, got it, got it. We got a hands up from, yep, Cheryl, awesome. Emily. Okay, so if you didn't get it, <clears throat> success, woohoo! All right, so we're just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna put on uh, 12, 12 stitches. <clears throat> so now I've got four. If you're using, uh, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. So here we go again. Through, around, pull it back through. Pull it, not tight, but taut. Taut is the word. You don't want it tight because you're not gonna be able to get the other needle back through the loop if it's too tight. So, uh, around, through the bottom one, loop it around, use the needle to pull it back through, pull that taut. Across the top, loop it around, put the needle through your thumb, wrap the thing around, pull it top. I don't know if anyone can see, let me turn this a little bit more forward. Okay, here we go, one more time. Here is the tail. We're going down across, loop it around, put the needle through this piece on your thumb, take the long thread, wrap it around, use that needle to pull it back through the loop, pull it taut. Okay. Cheater, got it, but I'm cheating since I knew it before. Well, I would just say that's being prepared. Well, not, not so much cheating. All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna do nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that's my 12 stitches. Let me see how many I did on here. Cheryl says 12 stitches, question. 12 stitches. I'm just doing 12 to practice for this. The actual pattern in this gauge on a size seven needle with this yarn is going to be 16. So if you just want to start now and make it 16, that's fine. I'm just doing 12 right now to teach the, um, the pattern. Uh, not the pattern, the, the stitches, how to knit and how to purl. Okay. So also this is, this is kind of a gauge, a small gauge swatch. So what a gauge swatch is, you just knit, I usually do maybe 20, but we can do with 12. Um, and you just knit a little square. And that way you can then take a ruler and see how many stitches are in an inch and how many stitches are in an inch this way. And that way you can gauge how many stitches you need to make the size of your finished project. So if you wanted a, a five inch wide scarf and you didn't know how big the stitches were going to end up being, you could do a little swatch and you could measure how many stitches were an inch, say six, and you wanted it five inches wide, you would say, well, I have six inches, six stitches in one inch, and I want it to be five. So six times five is 30. I'll need 30 stitches. And I want it to be, you know, with a scarf, you just keep knitting till you want it to stop. But if you wanted to know in advance how much yarn you were going to need or something, you could also measure how many rows you would get um, per inch. 
The tighter your stitches, the more you need to get the size you want. Right. The tighter your stitches or the smaller your needle, you're going to need more stitches because each stitch is going to be smaller and smaller depending on the needle and the skinniness of the yarn. So if you're using a big fat yarn, each stitch, I mean, I've knitted with yarn before where each stitch is like between half an inch and an inch each. So a five inch scarf would be five or six stitches, um, which goes really fast, but you need a lot of yarn because it, it does not go very far. Okay, so now we are going to switch to actual knitting. So take the piece that is not the cut piece, the long piece that is attached to the ball, not the tail. And we are going to learn a knit stitch. So it's a lot like the casting on stitch we just did. You're going to take the yarn that's attached to the ball. This is how I'm teaching you to knit continental, which is the European version. The American version, I find very hard to keep tension, which means keeping the same tightness on the thread so that the stitches stay even, not like tighter and looser and spacing and then pulling. You want to keep it as, as even as possible. Um, and I find this method the easiest. So you take the yarn in your hand like this. Okay, grab it. I put it on my middle finger. I wrap my middle finger around and I put my index finger underneath to hold it tight. And I hold the needle. Having it wrapped around this finger, um, you could do even your ring finger and then your middle finger and then hold it up like this. And it really just, it just keeps this tight because it's pulled against this finger. And then as you need more yarn, you kind of loosen it and slide and you'll get more yarn, okay? So you are going to, here we go. Does anyone have questions about how to hold this? Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around so you can see how to knit. You're holding the yarn to the back of the work. So it's not, you're not holding it across the front like this. It is um, hanging down like this. Sorry, this tail is very long. <clears throat> hanging down like this and you pull it up to the back and that's where you grab it from the back, okay? So here we go. Here is my favorite description of these stitches. Sorry, that is the tail. It is just much longer than I usually have. Carefully slide the stitches towards the end of the needle. You don't want them to slide off. If you're a beginner, you might wanna use wood needles instead of metal because they're less slippery. So you're gonna come from the left side of the stitch you're gonna stab it right through the right through the hole. Okay, can you see that? You go right through the stitch, just the, sorry. Can we, where's the camera? There we go. So left to right. You're gonna stab it. You're gonna strangle it, putting the yarn around it. You're gonna pull it back through the same hole, rip out its guts. What is happening? Okay, hold on. This is a hard angle for me. <clears throat> you're gonna stab it, strangle it by ripping, rip out its guts, and then you're gonna throw it off the cliff. You're going to left to right, through, through the stitch, stab it. You're gonna wrap the yarn around, strangle it, Pull it back through, rip out its guts, throw it off the cliff. Is this uh, <clears throat> is this like a Winchester? I don't. This is uh, very graphic. Mary knitted. This is how she would have learned. That's yeah. right. Are you sure we're learning how to knit? Listen, everything is multi-purpose in my life. Um. You like the wood better. I get it. I have both. Okay. That isn't, listen, Charlie, don't judge. It's after, after 12 here. <clears throat> okay. So from the back, it's going to look like this. Uh, I'm going through this stitch, stab it, 
I'm using my needle and my fingers. I use, I guess I use my middle finger to push it over and hold on to the yarn, pull it through and then throw it off the cliff. So let me do it from this way again. Dab it, strangle it, pull out its guts, throw it off a cliff. Stabbing, strangling, pulling its guts out, throwing it off a cliff. <clears throat> See the best way to show you. I think I need more light. Can everyone see? My daughter's laughing in the other room. That's the only way to learn. <laughs> I find it helpful. Okay. We're stabbing. We're strangling. We're ripping out guts and we're throwing it off cliffs. Stabbing, strangling. Whoops. Okay. I just pulled this knit off, this stitch off by accident. Just slide it back on the other needle. I'll do it again. No panicking. Left to right, stab, strangle, pull it back through, throw it off. Um, does anyone have any questions? You think you killed it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go across to the last stitch. My computer is so gonna fall off its little platform and we're all gonna get seasick. Okay, the last stitch, you just do the same thing. Just be careful it doesn't slide off. Stabbing, strangling, ripping out guts, throwing it off a cliff. And you have completed your first row. We're on our way. Um, now the next row, you just do the same thing. How much time do we have, Sir Charles? You have approximately 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. So we're gonna do another row of knit and then we're gonna to switch to purling because I wanna make sure everyone gets it, but I realize that you also are gonna have access to the video. So you can watch this over and over until you get it. And that this way you'll have the instruction of both. The other um, thing too on YouTube is you can actually, um, there's a little button that you can slow down uh, the pace. So I've used that actually when I watched back some of Sam's earlier stuff to try to start to learn, you can have it do it like, at a quarter speed or half speed. And then you can literally watch if you're trying to like work through that, uh, kind of like pushing through or wrapping around. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, do you think the showing from the back is helping or do you think it's, it's, I should do it forwards? How, how is everyone like, what is most useful to you guys? It's different from how you normally knit. So some people, the like the American version is, you hold the yarn in this hand and you go through and then you let everything go and you wrap the yarn around and then you try to hold it still. And I just, I find it's too much letting go. And um, I knitted a whole blanket that way one time. And then I taught myself continental because I was like, this is gonna take me the rest of my life to make another thing from that back help since the hands match. That's what I was thinking. Um, and so I just prefer continental. If you would like to, to knit American, I will judge you, but you can do it. That's how my grandma taught me. So I do have an affection for it. I'm Emily just says, too impatient. Uh, from, from the back helps because the hands match a little bit more, so. Okay. All right, so let's do one more row of knitting and then we're gonna switch to purling because I think I have faith in you guys. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Adjust the light. Let's see if this helps. Okay, so here is the long tail. You're going to wrap your finger. I guess I do it twice. Is that twice? Is it one and a half? Um, left to right. Oops. Left to right. Uh, stabbing. Strangling through off. 
So you're just basically what you're doing is you're using the, the needle on your right hand to grab the yarn, make it a loop and pull it through the loop that's on the needle already. And then just pulling that off. So this loop here was the one that was on the needle before this lower one. And then you made a new one. So you're stabbing it, grabbing the yarn, making a new loop, pulling that loop through and sliding the one off the needle. Oops, I'm not even in camera, I'm sorry. So stabbing to go through the hole, grab the yarn, pull the new loop through and just pull the whole thing off. Stab, strangle, pull out guts, throw off cliff. Or if you want to be nice, through, grab the yarn, pull it through, pull it off. See, stabbing is so much easier to remember. <clears throat> Here we go. So yeah, I just use my middle finger to, to push the yarn over the needle and kind of hold it tight. You're just making rows of loops. That's all it is. You're a crocheter and can't let go of the yarn. It's wrong. <laughs> wow, Sam, I knit American. Oh, sorry. This is okay. I I I actually don't judge. <laughs> Charlie, listen. Truth is truth. <laughs> All right, so let's let everyone it looks like I twisted the loop when it jumped off the cliff. What did I what did I do? What can I do to fix it? Um if you did, Cheryl, if you did twist it, what you can do is you can just hold it with your fingers and don't let go and then twist it whichever way it's supposed to be and slide it back on the needle. That's all. You be the boss of that loop. So now we should have two rows. Is anyone up to two rows? Because I want to teach you to purl now, but not if you're in the middle of a row, it'll be a little harder. Because you'll have to go back the other direction. Two rows done. Woot woot. Actually, Tanisa and anyone else knitting American, if you can keep tension proper, I'm super impressed because it's very hard for me. I I I did it because I was a quitter. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, but because I had to restart, I have one row so I can switch. Fantastic. All right. So basically, purling is just the backwards knitting. You're just too done. Nice. So the yarn is falling in front of the needle. When you turn, when you turn the, when you fit the. As you're knitting across, the yarn should be at the back if you're knitting. When you turn the work around, if you finish the row, then the yarn will be at the front. But if you have one twisted stitch, I wouldn't worry about it. If you, if you keep twisting the stitches, it's just gonna make your knitting too tight because you're using more yarn. Um, it's, it's just like twisting anything, it makes it tighter. Some people do it on purpose. It just, I find it very tight. You got it. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> purling is just backwards knitting. So there's only two stitches in knitting. There's knitting and purling. Patterns, uh, baubles, different textured knits, all of them are just some combination of knitting and purling. There's just the two. You can do like a, a Passover stitch and stuff, It's which is just looping the yarn around. So it's it's not even a stitch. It's just sometimes you'll you'll loop the yarn and then just skip a stitch and it'll make like a like a hole or something. Um, some people do that by accident. It's called a yarn over. Um, but uh, for our intents and purposes, knitting and purling is all you need to know. So 
you're, you're going to now, instead of holding the yarn to the back, the yarn should be falling to the front now because it, it came out the back of the knit stitch. And when I say there's only two stitches, there's really only one. It's just how you do it because we knitted, the back of the knit is a purl stitch. That's all it is, it's just backwards. So now turn the yarn around, hold the yarn down to, towards you and do the same thing. From the top, grab the yarn like this. This, sorry, this tail is confusing. Okay, yarn is falling towards you. Grab the yarn, do the same wrapping thing to hold the tension and hold the yarn like this. So the yarn is coming off the needle towards you. <clears throat> You're still stabbing, strangling, scooping, and shoving off cliffs. You're just doing it from right to left now. So instead of going through the, the stitch left to right, you're gonna go right to left. Sorry, instead of left to right, you're gonna go right to left. You are going to have the needle go down in front of the yarn. Sorry. Sorry, it's a little hard to do from behind the camera. Okay. So make sure you are just in the loop, right to left. You're going front to back. You're gonna go over the top and you're going to push it backwards. You're gonna push the needle towards the stitch, scoop out its guts and pull it off. Okay, oops, here we go. Right to left. Through the stitch from right to left, put front to back yarn, grab it and slide it through. I don't know if this is as easy to see. I'm gonna do it from the front here. So it's right to left. You're going through the front of this stitch. You're gonna wrap, you're gonna push the yarn forward, grab it with the tip of the needle, drag it through the loop and pull it off. So before, you were gonna be knitting this way. The needles were pointing the same direction, right? Right, left to right. This way you're going, the, ne the yarn is in the front instead of the back. You're going right to left. You're wrapping the yarn around. I am, for an actress who lives on camera, I'm having a really hard time keeping my hands in frame. Okay, we're doing this again. <clears throat> Right to left, wrap the yarn around, drag it through, throw it off the cliff. Right to left, right to left, wrap the yarn around, pull the loop back through, push it back through to the back, pull it off. Right to left. Is it blurry this close or is it clear? Looks clear to me. Okay. Right to left. Push the yarn over, strangle it, grab the loop, push it back through the back side, pull it off. So it's just knitting backwards. Okay. On a level of one to 10, how frustrated is everybody? Five, zero, nice. One, zero, yay. I still find it hard holding the yarn like you do, but I'm getting there. I love it. Okay, right to left. Listen, holding the yarn and tension is as 
is as much a part of learning to do this as learning how to do the stitches. <laughs> Not that much caffeine. Too much caffeine is hard because then my hands would shake. Um, it's 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 like learning to golf or play tennis. You have to learn all the components and put them together. Um, without the swinging of a sporting equipment. <clears throat> Persevering, I love it, thank you. Um, so, should we do another, we can do it. Shall we do another row of purling? Yes, Jacqueline, I think you're right. I think that whatever works for you, if you wanna loop it around your foot, whatever works. You have a minion who has to stand next to you and holding it. That also works. Okay. Should we do one more roll of, row of purling before we get into what time is it? Uh, yeah, you've got you've got a little bit more time, about five, five ten. Okay. So we'll do one more row of, row of purling, and then I'm going to tell you the secret to practicing. Okay, so um, uh, yarn is held in the front for purling. So it's a little bit, for me, it's a little bit shorter. Okay, so it's just, it kind of blocks itself is the problem. So through the loop, wrap it around. I feel like it's easier to show you this way from the top. Right to left, loop it around, slide the loop through to the back. So when you're knitting, the yarn is held in the back and you're using this needle to pull the yarn forward through the loop, right? So you're stabbing from front to back, left to right, grabbing the yarn and pulling it back to the front. For purling, you start with the yarn in the front and you're using the needle to pull that loop to the back. It's just, are you bringing the loop to the front or bringing it to the back? Purling, you're bringing it to the back. So right to left, grab the yarn, pull it to the back. Knitting, you'd be doing the opposite. So purling, right to left, loop it around, pull the loop back to the back. That's all it is. It's either frontwards or backwards. So I'm gonna finish this row real quick so that I can show you the pattern and then you can practice on your own for next week <clears throat> or not next week, the, the next time, which is in a few weeks. Okay, so we still have 12 stitches, which is also something important to do. You should count your stitches from time to time to make sure you haven't added any or lost any. And next time I will teach you what to do if that's the case, if you have the wrong number. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. This pattern, of this cozy is called um, seed stitch. So if you, if you just knit one side and purl back, knit and then purl, what's going to happen is the whole front will be knit, the whole back will be purl, and the sides will roll in because there's different tension on knitting and purling. If you want your knitting to lay flat, you could do all knitting so that it is knit one way. And then when you knit the other way, the back is purling. So you'll have stripes of, of knit and purl from either side. Seed stitch is alternating knit and purl. If you just knit and purl across, knit one stitch, purl one stitch, knit one stitch, purl one stitch. And then on the way back, you knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches, you'll get ribbing. That's how you get like a ribbed sweater. They alternate. This is the opposite. So if you're looking at a knit stitch, you will purl it. And if you're looking at a purl stitch, you will knit it. And then it ends up looking like, like bumps and it stays nice and flat and it won't roll. And you don't have to really know what you're doing as long as um, you count. So <clears throat> if you have 12 stitches, 
and you knit and purl across, you'll start with a knit, purl, knit, purl. If it's an even number of stitches, you'll start with a knit, you'll end with a purl. And when you turn it around, the back of the knit, the back of the last purl stitch is a knit stitch. So you'll do the opposite. You'll go purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. And then the front, you'll go knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And the way back, you'll go purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. Okay? Um, I love seed stitch. Uh, yeah, you can work with 16 stitches. Exactly. So this is 12 because I'm just doing a swatch. But if you're on size seven needles, you're going to want 16 stitches. If you're on size, say, uh, 5.5, which I think is I think is a size eight stitch, um, I think you're going to want 12 stitches. If you are on even bigger, I suggest you make a swatch and measure it and multiply how many stitches per inch times 3.5. And that's how many stitches you will need. So if you have a tiny little needle and you've got 10 stitches per inch, you're going to need 30 stitches. Or no, that's wrong. 10, 30, 35 stitches. If you have big fat yarn, you're going to want fewer stitches. And honestly, it doesn't matter that much. It's just, it's just, you don't, <laughs> you don't want, you, you kind of don't want your cozy like sticking up over the edge of your mug. You'd have to bunch it down and it just wouldn't be as, as easy to use. So I'm gonna show you now how to do the alternate stitching um, and things to remember. So I want you all to practice and do your, make as much of this as you can in the, in the time between the next class. So we are going to knit the first stitch. So the yarn is in the back, okay? Yarn is to the back, left to right. Stab it, strangle it, pull the guts out, throw it off a cliff. Now, you're going to bring the yarn to the front of the work now, okay? And you're going to purl right to left. Stab it, strangle it, pull those guts out, throw it off the cliff. So now this way. You're going to knit left to right, stab it, strangle, rip, throw. Now you're going to bring the yarn to the front for purling. If you do not... And then you're gonna move the yarn to the back to knit. You're gonna use the yarn to the front to purl. Back and forth. If you do not bring the yarn to the correct side, if you try to knit with the yarn from the back or from the front, and if you try to purl with the yarn from the back, what's gonna happen is the yarn will wrap around the needle. And So if I tried to knit with the yarn from the front, what will happen is this will wrap around, but it'll get confusing and I will, the yarn is going over the needles twice and you'll end up with an extra loop on your needle and then you'll have too many stitches and your pattern will go like this. It'll get bigger and bigger, which is what, what happens to me when I crochet and I end up with a trapezoid. I'm, a I'm not great at crocheting. <laughs> I can do it, but I'm not great because I always add extra stitches and just, and then the next row, you don't realize it's an extra one and you crochet it or knit it and it just, it grows. Um, and the best way to know if you've done a knit stitch or a purl stitch, a knit stitch, you can see the loop. It just looks like a V like this, okay? A purl stitch, the top of the stitch from below is in front. So it looks like a, like a button. So that's why, I think that's why they call it a pearl. So let me finish this row and then I will show you what they look like. So just practice all your stitches and then um, I'm going to send out the pattern. And if you can do it, great. And if you can't, um, we will practice it again. So is there enough light to see? And, and how many stitches was it again? 16? So if, 16. If you're on, which it says in the pattern, if you are on a size seven needle, you want 16 stitches. If you're on a size eight needle, you're going to want 12. And if you are on a 13, I'm going to guess you're going to want like nine or so, but you'll have to do a, um, a swatch to see. 
if you're on a smaller needle, like a 3.5, I'm going to guess you're going to need 20 or 22 stitches. But I would su highly suggest you do a swatch to count. Um, can you see how, if you pull the yarn down a little bit, this stitch here is like a V, and this stitch here is like a little bar. This is a knit stitch. That is a purl stitch. See, it looks like a little purl. So going back, you're going to knit the, you're going to knit this purl, purl this knit, knit this purl so that they alternate and you end up with <laughs> See, I knew that was going to happen. Hi. Um And if you if you end with the row with a purl stitch, then turn the needle around, do you start with the knit? This no, curious. you start with the purl. You start purl. with the opposite. Mm -hmm. Wait. No, if you end with a knit stitch. If you end with a you uh, end you with a knit, with when a you purl. turn it around, you start with a knit. Got so it. you start with whatever you finished with, because when you turn it around, it'll be the opposite. Got it. It's, once you do it, it's easier to understand. Saying it, yeah. No, so if you end the row with a purl stitch and you turn the needle around, you start with a purl stitch. Yeah. You start with the same thing you ended because even though you're trying to do the opposite, when you turn around, it is the opposite. It's like double negatives. Okay. Uh, we got through so much. I think, so we're going to set this out the- it, uh, This is what it should look like. Yeah. So one row knit purl across, the next row purl knit across. Yes, if you have an even number of stitches. If you have an odd number, just just do even numbers of stitches. Whatever, whatever the gauge. So say you did your, it's like a mirror image. Yes, exactly. So say you did your gauge and it says you need nine stitches, just do 10 or eight so that you can stay on pattern <clears throat> in an even number of stitches. And then next time we will work on finishing this, we're gonna cast off. And then the class after that, we'll talk about um, uh, getting the, the loop and the button and sewing in the edges and all that stuff. Excellent. So um, pattern to come. Um, hopefully that if you come back and watch the video, you won't have any more questions. And if you do, that's okay. We'll go over them next time. This was a lot to learn. I'm very proud of you all. Yeah, you got it very fast, y'all. Um, well, amazing. So uh, yeah, we'll be sending out the, the pattern <laughs> in this video. Um, and then just don't forget that we're doing, uh, let's see, the next class is coming up here. I have this pulled up somewhere. Uh, your next class is in April. So uh, you have some time to practice and, and show off your creations to Sam. So obviously, like if, you, if you're creating, working on your, your uh, knitting and purling and whatnot, uh, go ahead and tag Sam so she can see it as well. She mm -hmm. can make a little, little feedback. Um, yeah, definitely practice. Do do? Tag me on Twitter or whatever so I can see it. Yeah. Um, so uh, you'll be getting emails about those upcoming classes as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you are a part of the meet and greet as well, um, just remain here. If you're not, if you can just exit the vehicle at the before and after the cabin, please keep your hands to yourself. Stop picking your nose, please. When just leave. You get, when you take all, everything you brought on board with you. Yeah. Don't forget your cell phones and your stuff. And your um, knitting. Uh, yeah, bring your knitting. Don't forget your needles. Uh, can you bring can you bring needles onto planes? I actually have this question. You can. You know, after nine eleven, you couldn't. Yeah. This is you know the illusion of security. Um, they they wouldn't let me bring needles on, and so I just put them in my hair, and it was fine. Okay. Wow. Wooden. I couldn't bring metal ones. I brought I brought wood ones. Um, you can. What they won't let you bring is scissors longer than four inch long scissors. So. Like the whole scissor has to be four inches. So you just get little embroidery ones. Um, I love knitting on planes. I have dropped needles and they've run all the, way. all the way down the aisle. And I've had an entire cabin crawling around <laughs> helping me find them. <laughs> and they're so metal, so they go like clang, 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 clang. Yeah, literally, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Amazing. it's it's a great, it's a great use of time. Um, well, so thank you all. Um, if, yeah, so if you're in the meet and greet, uh, please just remain here. 
Um, and then uh, thank you, Tanisa, um, uh, for coming over and, and interpreting. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody. See you at the next class. And uh, you. Have a great practice. <laughs>